All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast once again. There will actually be some stuff on the screen this time, but it's not going to be changing very often. As always, PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and in the top pinned comment if anybody wants to support me. So it's somewhat finally time to do something specifically about Guyana, the tiny oil giant recently emerging in the uh, later 2010s. This episode was semi-requested, similar to the uh, Namibia Kavango Basin video from a few weeks back, except this isn't exactly what was requested, so I probably won't be getting paid. But for future reference, I guess I kind of, sort of, ish take commissions. I guess that's what you would have to phrase it as. Only if it is something within my purview. So Guyana is a relatively small nation in northern South America, for those who are unfamiliar with it. It is sandwiched in between Venezuela, the fallen oil giant, because uh, they kind of collapsed, as well as Brazil, an emerging oil giant, and Suriname, who will potentially be uh, emerging with some decent oil production as well. However, I fully suspect Guyana is going to be the uh, more dominant one, of the uh, trio of small nations and territories there. So those of you who are familiar with it uh, already know, Guyana throughout the uh, recent years, the late 2010s, was uh, just exploding with discovery after discovery. The majority of them being found in the very prolific Starbrick block, Starbroic block. We're just gonna refer to it as the Star block. And total discoveries had already tallied up over 8 billion barrels. Already over half of uh, the 15 or so that uh, was initially suspected to be in the total offshore area shared by Guyana and Suriname combined. And most of that has just been discovered in the star block. Also, I apologize for any outside noises that make it into the microphone. I have no control over those. Forgive me, please. And the sum collective total of those so far is uh, going to amount to an expected peak out of about 750,000 barrels per day of oil production in the earlier late 2020s and there is of course uh, still plenty of oil left out there to be found as again the star block is just one block granted it's a big one but it's just one block and almost all of this has only been on like the eastern 40 percent of it now as for the uh, topography and geology itself you remember potentially from the uh, namibia kavango video uh, we discussed that the the two primary setups uh, where you get prolific petroleum finds are when you have a uh, basically an actual basin basin a large not necessarily it can be small as in the case of a uh, southeastern ghana but you have a uh, mostly enclosed at least enclosed on on three general sides but mostly enclosed by a much higher elevation area of land or seafloor but you have a mostly enclosed uh, area, mostly enclosed basin of much lower elevation, surrounded uh, by typically quickly rising much higher elevation. The uh, best, most well-known example of this is the, uh, the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Persian Basin. And the other primary type of setup uh, where you get decent amounts of petroleum is the low-lying gradual slope away from typically high-rising mountains towards the ocean and down further through the ocean before it drops off at the shelf though many of the slope away setups are primarily completely underwater already the best primary offshore example being brazil and uh, all their pre-salt formations though a decent on land example would be somalia so offshore guyana has both sort of not necessarily two out of two you could probably call it like 1.7 out of 2, maybe. I thought that offshore Guyana was just a general, uh, really gradual slope away setup. And actually, if you look at uh, Google Earth or uh, Google Maps satellite version, what it shows for offshore Guyana, uh, generally, it just almost shows it as kind of just flat. Which, when looking recently at uh, the actual bathymetry data, that I can only assume has only just now uh, recently come from the oil companies themselves uh, as they were doing their surveys out there. Because just in case anyone isn't aware, the portrayal you see on Google Earth, at least on a large scale, uh, of the, the ocean floor is 
generally sort of correct, but a lot of it is a sort of really broad estimation because the only way to actually know the exact uh, formation of the seafloor is to, you know, just go back and forth across it with surveying equipment, which uh, takes a lot of money and a lot of time to do. So uh, the most accurate stuff we have is generally for coastlines, granted primarily the immediate offshore regions of first world nations, and some second and third world nations that are decent oil producers, go figure. But in general, uh, most of what you see is, is more of a broad estimation until uh, actual surveying is done across that area, and uh, most of the ocean is unsurveyed because nobody wants to foot that bill, except uh, in specific regions where the oil companies are more than glad to foot the bill for that surveying because they're, you know, gonna get money back after doing it. So it turns out the offshore area of Guyana and a bit of offshore Suriname is not just basically flat or just a general slope away. It is actually a, uh, I'll call it a half basin, but it's sort of a, a half bowl. It's basically a, sort of a wide, relatively uncurved U cut in to the, uh, the general shelf inwards uh, towards Guyana and Suriname. And I'll try to have a particular image of uh, what I mean on screen at the moment. So it's a not mostly enclosed, but at least sort of semi-enclosed downward and downward uh, sloping formation. And that's particularly for offshore is perfect. Though nothing's actually perfect, but close to perfect. Once I actually saw that uh, when looking up specific stuff before I recorded this, that struck me as a, oh, now it all makes sense moment for why Guyana has actually been so prolific. And the most prolific sections of that setup are going to be on the downward slope portions inside the U setup, particularly on the quote-unquote uh, bottom portion of the U as opposed to the two sides. And, uh, Lo and behold, guess where the star block is? Now it, it really, really does all make sense. And seeing this now raises my expectations uh, for Guyana tremendously from what they previously were. Way back in my uh, peak oil projections video where I did a bunch for uh, several different nations, you can see a link to that in the, uh, the comments. I mentioned that I expected Guyana to, uh, to find more over time. I had previously expected uh, they would find enough to eventually raise the expected uh, peak of around 750, 750,000 barrels per day up to somewhere more between 1.1 and 1.4 million barrels per day. Now that has changed. It hasn't gone up to something insane, mind you, but it's, uh, it's definitely gone higher than that. So as I previously said, most of the stuff has uh, been found in the star block. And there are quite a number in uh, still the same area of the star block. There are quite a number of still yet to uh, be drilled potential finds that they've pinpointed that uh, they're presumably going to be getting around to in the next couple of years. So if the trend for good finds holds in the star block, particularly in that area, based on the amount of uh, potentials still lying out there. I honestly suspect they're going to find enough to, uh, from that particular region of it, pull out another 500,000 barrels a day, which would uh, put the initial expectancy at like 1.25. However, keep in mind, anything discovered uh, from now on throughout uh, the 2020s will then take uh, a bit longer to develop because all this other stuff is going to be coming online throughout the early to mid 2020s. So things discovered from now on will be coming online uh, probably late 2020s through early and mid 2030s. So to remain conservative for safety's sake, I'm going to subtract off a expected loss of about a third of that 750 from declines. And so that would put the uh, initial expectancy at about a million so far. And right behind the star block are the Orinduik and Kanaku blocks. And they're basically along the, uh, the same portion of the U-Bowl that the star block is. And they have a, a very similarly thick line across them of expected potential fields. 
And initially, I would have uh, thus expected them to probably play out the same way that Starblock has number-wise. However, oil found in those two hasn't been as favorable. So assuming the trend holds, and uh, there's a similar decent amount, but not all of it's all that great in those two, I'd probably still expect uh, them to be able to add maybe half a million from that in terms of production. So thus bumping my expectancy uh, for Guyana up to 1.5 at some point. You have the uh, Demerara block and the Quarantine block or Quarantine, though it's primarily the upper or northern portion of the Quarantine block that's interesting. That does have a number of potentials in it already, and Demerara does as well. And although I suspect uh, there's less closer to the shore, I do obviously believe they're will be some uh, finds closer to the shore, but most I suspect is going to be further offshore. But throwing the Demerara and Quarantine together, I'd probably suspect you could probably get another half a million out of those two, though you might be starting to push further along the timeline, but we can come back to that later. But you can throw on another potential half a million from that and bring my expectancy of potential, at least, up to two million. The uh, Kanye or Kanje, that one's kind of small and a bit by itself, but it is abutting uh, finds over in Suriname side. It might be higher, but I'll safely throw on like 250 for that one. Then you start getting out to uh, Kayatur and C block, way out at the uh, the farthest edges, and where the U-shaped basin slope is uh, basically flattening out. Out there, I don't actually suspect them to find uh, too much. I do suspect them to find something. But I don't suspect it to be along the lines of uh, the Star Block or the Orinduic and Kanaku combination. But given a combination of my suspicion that that's where uh, favorability would have ended, plus the uh, at least the lack of initial prospect data as of the moment, I'd safely keep that low and just throw in another 250 maybe. Thus, as basic addition indicates, uh, bringing an expectation of up to 2.5 now as a uh, potential threshold. Then over on the uh, left wall of the U-shaped basin, you have the Roraima and unclassified blocks, which are still a bit further out, but are part of the, uh, the basin slope. And if they reflect the same kind of potential as the, uh, the other side of the basin wall over on the right side, along where Guyana and Suriname share, then there might be up to half a million's worth uh, out there in those two, and also down in that uh, thin little section of the star block that uh, gets really narrow but still reaches out to the uh, the western wall, which would thus elevate uh, my expectancy to about three million. Granted, all this additional exploration will have taken time, so a lot of this stuff will be a bit even further into the future, uh, most of it into the 2030s at this point, assuming everything keeps moving as rapidly as it did in the later 2010s. So for safety's sake, at least assume some loss. Drop another 250, 2.75 then. And the uh, the flatter, broad sweep of stuff, basically right off of the shore. As I said, I don't expect there to be uh, nearly as much there as there is in the actual U-shaped basin. But I do expect there still to be some decent amount there. But that entire broad area, I would only really give uh, maybe 500,000 barrels a day's worth of expectancy. Thus, still putting Guyana up, up over 3 million at a rough uh, 3.25. And that's still also not including production expansion projects as uh, have been seen in recent years in uh, places like Norway. As well as just a broad sweeping potential for uh, extra fields more than I might initially be expecting. So it still does decently have a, uh, a potential chance to go higher than that. Yes, I apologize to be disappointing. This is just a broad generalization. I'm not doing like hard line math. But with all of this uh, put together, along with the favorability of, uh, of how, uh, by modern standards at least, decently cheap the offshore Guyana oil is, typically being less than uh, $40 for break-even price. Guyana, as long as nothing goes wrong, uh, not struck by a meteor, or doesn't implode on itself like Venezuela did, Guyana is looking really, really decent. And as the nation gets richer, obviously uh, rising towards second and first world living standards, you'd have to also account for increasing consumption. And they have roughly the same population as uh, my state of Alaska, about 750,000 or so. 
and Alaska's oil consumption can vary, and the actual citizenry oil consumption is uh, in the lower 100,000s or so in terms of barrels per day. Total state oil consumption is usually up around like 160 or so uh, from a combination of uh, a bunch of jet fuel consumption for cargo flights, as Anchorage is the uh, Trans-Pacific Air Cargo Hub, and fuel oil for the oil tankers obviously leaving uh, Valdez, and also for bulk carriers. But even for safety's sake, assuming the full 160, uh, Guyana goes full first world, gets up to 160,000 barrels a day of general consumption, then accounting for uh, fuel oil for the oil tankers. At, if you assume uh, that maximum there, over 3 million barrels a day, and assume they're using, you know, the 2 million barrel super tankers, that would be one tanker leaving each day, plus one additional tanker leaving every other day. So a daily 40,000 barrel uh, fuel fill up, plus a every other day 40,000 barrel fuel fill up uh, divided amongst the days. So that's 20,000, throw on another 60, and you get uh, 220, so a bit above 200, lower 200,000s in uh, potential consumption, accounting for the fuel oil. Plus, if Guyana completely rises to full first world living standards, even under my old expectancy of only between 1.1 and 1.4 million barrels per day of peak production, uh, that would still be a really decent uh, export ratio. And uh, under this new potential expectancy, that would uh, also be a really, really good export ratio. So where formerly I expected Guyana to at least... Uh, at sort of a minimum, get up to 1.1 million barrels per day of production at some points at the highest point. And at maximum, I expected them to get up to between 1.4 and 1.6 maybe. My new expectation now is uh, for a minimum, I expect at an absolute minimum, Guyana to get up to 1.6 or 1.7 million barrels per day at some point. And for an absolute maximum, accounting for the potential extra stuff, I would expect uh, them to potentially go as high as uh, mid threes, up to 3.6 million barrels per day. And that's it for this one. So thank everybody for sticking around and listening. If anybody wants to support, and only if you actually can, PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and in the top in comments. May our almighty Father in heaven protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.